All right, Jesse on Fire, welcome back to the channel. Now let's talk about Michael Bisbing's son, because Bisbing done found himself in the news again because a million little troll kids have found the time in their normally packed schedules. Like normally the guys that, that like run their mouth at commentators after the events, normally those guys have a schedule filled with stuff. Like meeting after meeting after meeting, super productive members of society, and they're like, you know what? I need to take a break from negotiating this multi-million dollar deal so that I can get into Twitter and I could tell Michael Bisbing that his commentary was so biased, it was unwatchable. He should go jump off a bridge. And now let me get back to my super productive life. Uh, let me call my really hot girlfriend <laughs> because yeah, I, I definitely have one of those. And I got her by trolling people like Michael Bisbing on Twitter. That's the kind of person that does this. Hey baby, what's up girl? Yeah, you gonna come over and cook me dinner? Yeah, of course. I got that thing I told you I would have. Mm-hmm. Hang on for a second. I'm gonna go tell Michael Bisbing to jump off a bridge because this is the same person that would do this, that would do this. Losers. Okay, so weirdo people who would tell a commentator to jump off a bridge, generally not super productive. I'm gonna make a bet, just gonna make like a, a, a small wager that your life sucks, okay? If you've told a commentator to kill themselves based on their biased commentary, you are probably a sorry ass. Like I just, I, I don't think I'm stepping out of line saying a thing like that. So if you're a person who DM'd Michael Bisbing that he should jump off a bridge or some kind of thing like that, you are a sorry ass. Even if you are doing all of these other things, that invalidates anything good you're doing in your life because it's just weird. It's weird, man. That's super, super weird. It can only come from a place of self-hatred or sociopathy, okay? That's a, the condition that you call sociopaths, like a person who doesn't realize there's another person on the other end of the message. Because here's the thing, okay? Now, I realize that a lot of people watch television or watch videos or watch like whatever. And to them, the person on the other side of the camera is like some different form of like being. It's like they're not an actual human. So you ne they, like, they don't even think about like, like, why would this be really fucked up if I said this? Right. And like in the case of Michael Bisping, as an example, OK, Michael Bisping was a fighter, a superstar, you know, middleweight champion fighter in the hall of fame. Okay. What's he doing now? Like, what does he do? He's a commentator. Okay. That's what he does. And so his career is being a commentator. And so this was his very first pay-per-view event. Okay. He, he took over for Joe Rogan, who is the quintessential centerpiece of every single pay-per-view event. I know that guys like Trent Rainsmith and these other little loony dudes, like, you know, wait, wait. So what do you want me to say? We want you to just hammer Rogan. All right. Uh, why am I doing that? Because he's problematic and you want to increase, you know, you want to increase your reach, right? Just say something really, really crazy. Then people will know who you are. Otherwise, no one will ever know who you are. I, I can do that. What should I focus on? Doesn't matter. Just try to get his job taken away. All right. But aside from weirdos like that, the rest of the world knows Joe Rogan is the centerpiece of UFC pay-per-view commentary. And, and Bisbing, who's a commentator, is filling in for Joe Rogan. Okay. That's a big moment for Bisbing. It's his first pay-per-view. That is a huge moment in his career. And so I know like, you know, his life's so much better than yours that like you couldn't think that he's actually like a human being. He's got a wife, he's got kids. Like his life is probably pretty fucking similar to yours except when he puts on the headset and you're like, you know what I want to do? I want to tell him to kill himself because he did such a bad job in this tremendous moment in his career. It's like, like I said, dude, you're a sorry ass. Like you're a sorry ass, okay? Now you could say something like, I find it annoying when commentators are always saying Izzy's doing so good when it doesn't look like that to me on television. And here's what I would say. I would say, well, one main thing to that, okay? So for those of you who are new to the channel or didn't pay attention in the last couple of weeks, I was at 271. I was extraordinarily close. Michael Bisbing got up to go to the bathroom and on his route, before he even got out of the main section of the thing, he came up and said, what's up to me and my wife? Because we were in the front row right there, okay? Like, he, I introduced him to my wife. Good moment. I love Bisping. By the way, I mean, let's just be honest here. Uh, I do have an affinity for Michael Bisping because he's my boy. He had me on his show twice. I love that guy. He is an incredibly good guy. I am very loyal to the people who have like shown love to me and the channel, etc. Chandler, Eric Nixick, anybody on Francis's team. I love these guys, dude. But that's not why I'm doing this video, just for the record. Like, that's not, like, this is, this stands. This is a 
weak ass bullshit move for you to hammer him like that. Okay. If you want to say it's annoying, that's fine, dude. Tell him to kill himself. Like he told him to jump off a bridge, dude. That's, that's the kind of shit he was getting. It's like, bro, are you serious? So anyway, the point is I was that close to the octagon also. So I could actually watch Izzy in the octagon fighting. Okay. And I'm telling you, if you haven't ever been that close, you might not understand what I'm going to say, but this is because I've been to many UFCs. I've never watched someone like Izzy fight. I've never seen Connor fight. I've never seen Izzy fight or had never seen Izzy fight. Like the main events had never been someone of that, you know, like that stature. And it was different, dude. Like it was different. I saw all the other fights leading up to it. Watching Izzy is different, dude. He is, this is the first time I've ever be, been able to say like, when someone's a real star, you can feel it, dude. Like you can feel it. You could see it on them in the cage. It was amazing. I've seen him fight a million times. I've seen every single one of his fights in the UFC, all of them. In person, it's different, dude. It's di- he is He has this like, like a lot of people have energy that you can feel through the ca- like through the camera, and he's definitely one of those. I'm telling you, in person, it's different, dude. Like you look and you're like, God, he's so confident, dude. Like it's like exuding out of him. There's like a there's an aura around him that is like there was no other fighter that that had it at all that whole night. So I can understand how when you're commentating for him, maybe things that he's doing appear to be you know a bigger deal than they do for the other guy or whatever. You know, like I, I haven't heard the commentary. I don't even need to hear it because it doesn't matter. I don't care if he was biased. That's not even the point. dude. I'm just telling you, if he was, I'm telling you exactly why. It is crazy watching Izzy in person, dude. Like it's fucking crazy watching him in person. I'm not a person who just says shit, dude. Like I'm not a person who just throws things like that out. Like, oh, his aura is really special. Have you ever heard me say that about someone before? Okay, I talk about a lot of stuff. I've never said, wow, that guy's aura was incredible. But that's exactly what it is with Izzy. It's uh, it's not even really like describable. You're like, God damn, man. Like, you feel like you're in the presence of greatness watching him. It's special. It's different, dude. But anyway, either way, people who hammered Bisping for that, like, fuck you, dude. But we're going to read this article anyway uh, because there's a lot of notable stuff in it, right? So, uh... You know, this past weekend at UFC 271, the former middleweight champion replaced Joe Rogan as part of the broadcast team calling the card capped off by Israel Adesanya defeating Robert Whitaker by unanimous decision. Afterwards, Bisping received a ton of criticism online for what was being perceived as biased commentary towards Adesanya. Let me actually just say this. Do you guys remember uh, what the criticism was when Joe Rogan, uh, you know, commentated for Izzy against Blahovic? You guys remember that? Because you guys gave Joe Rogan, those guys, they, they hammered Joe Rogan for that. They hammer. Oh my God. The commentary was unbelievably biased, dude. It was so biased, dude. Oh my God. Like who cares? Like seriously, who cares? Who cares? I, I'm t- like, I'm, I don't want to reiterate, but I'm telling you why that is. Why that happens is you can't really understand unless you're that close watching him. You're like, it's like, Anyway, whatever. Saturday night after the commentary, there was a slew of abuse, shall we say, but I didn't take it to heart, Bisping said on Fighter vs. the Writer. I wasn't going to kill myself or jump off a bridge as many people were telling me to do. We've covered this. Uh, But maybe I could have worded it differently in hindsight. I haven't had a chance to watch it back. I only got back yesterday and then I've had work and things and obviously I have family as well. I can't be like, guys, I know I haven't seen you in a few days, but I'm just going to watch myself for half an hour. Oh man, I do that all the time. (laughs) Just kidding, I don't. Actually, I do. I do. Um, but I don't, you know what, though? I don't think I would watch the, the show. I don't know. I watch my YouTube videos a lot. Uh, I just want to make sure that, you know, I'm coming off in a way that's not embarrassing. And sometimes I fail. So that said, oh, you know what? Let me say one thing, actually. So just commenting on Bisming's response to this. So Bisming in, I can't remember exactly where this was, but he was talking about, uh, he, that he had done a an anger management class like he's he said I can't remember the context but he was like yeah he said that he did an anger management class and I'm telling you dude that shit worked Bisping used to be like Bisping used to fly off the handle all the time I remember one time like there was a there was a Twitter exchange where Bisping wrote a, a, a like a paragraph back to some guy and he hammered this guy dude like he he literally he reached inside this guy and just tore his heart out like it was like it was such a great response but it was so long I was like Dude, he must have made Bisping so mad for him to have written all that. Like, that was a huge response, dude. And, 
I think it actually was on Instagram because it was so long. Like it was so long. It was hilarious. Dude, I was like, wow, that guy really got under Bisping's skin. It's a great response though. And basically just to summarize, Bisping was like, you would, li- you would come up and take a picture with me. You'd ask me for an autograph and you'd do anything to be me for five minutes, except much longer and a lot of fuck yous in there. It was great. But yeah, now he, uh, he's calm, man. Like I was, I was telling my wife about that last night and she's like, maybe you should do that. And I was like, ah, I don't know. I'm Jesse on fire, man. Like the, my brand is kind of, I fly off the handle, you know, like I, I it, gauging off of Bisbing, it's probably pretty effective. I don't think that's a good idea for me. You know, like, I think I do my best work when I'm mad or when I, you know, like, I don't want to suppress that part of my, my, uh, you know, my response system, even though it would probably be healthy. But, uh, but Bisbing is, I mean, seriously, like, I mean, this as a compliment, like he's, uh, he's very clearly scaled it back. It also is probably easy. Like, you know, he was like a fighter for years. So he had like an outlet for that. Like, you know, he's fighting. He's actually like fighting people constantly. He's training in the gym, fighting, fighting, fighting. And now he's like, all right, now I'm not fighting anymore. Like I can chill out. Like I never got to just like routinely beat the shit out of people all the time. I mean, aside from like, you know, training and stuff, but like, you know, so maybe it's more bottled up in me. I'm not taking the class though. Anyway, um, Bisping said, I do stand by a lot of what I said. I thought the fight was very close. I thought Robert Whitaker was just a smidge behind in most rounds. My point that I was making, I wasn't being critical of Robert Whitaker, but the reality is those rounds that he lost, they were so close, but they were still going to going to go down his losses. He didn't put all his hard work in just to come to Houston to lose. So if he wants to win the fight, my advice is to start throwing more hands, do that. Izzy, in my opinion, was doing enough to win, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so look, here's the thing. So... I watched the Weasels breakdown, right? Like the Weasel, like who really won the fight? And in one of those rounds, it was like, ooh, that was so close, but I think you've got to give it to Whitaker, right? Ooh, that was so close. I think you got to give it to Whitaker. No, wrong. I almost always agree with the Weasels breakdowns on who you give the round to, but bottom line, point blank period, no conversation. If there is any semblance of, ooh, that was so close, but I think you have to fill in the blank with the champion, period. Like, I'm sorry, if it's, if it's like that, if even the weasel slowing it down, taking frame by frame shots and goes, here is one light strike, here is one whatever strike, here is a hard leg strike, here's a whatever, and counts every single thing, and it's still like, ooh, I'm not really sure, bottom line, the, the, if it's, I think then, champion, fill in the blank, champion, and that would be the same if Robert Whitaker was the champion and Izzy was the challenger, like, the champion gets the nod on those super close rounds, that's the way it works, dude. That's the way it works. You don't get to win the belt because someone went, well, I think that guy might have. You have to take it. And Whitaker did a great job, dude. But the bottom line is this. He got some, like everyone is basing the fact that Whitaker won on the fact that he was able to secure takedowns. Okay. Now I have, since the event, I've said this a bunch of times. Okay. I've said this a bunch of times. I, the way I, I like, and again, I'm not an expert on judging criteria, so I'm not trying to say that this should or shouldn't be the way that they judge. I mean, obviously they should judge via the criteria, but me personally, when I'm watching a fight, okay. When I, as a spectator, if a person gets a takedown, right, they get a takedown, they've got the guy on the ground and the, the guy does some kind of impressive escape to stand up. I score this, the escape all, like equal to the takedown for me. Right. Like if they if the guy takes him down, he's got him in a bad position. He doesn't do he does no damage. And the guy through technique and skill does something crazy to escape where he's at and stand up. I'm like, okay, great takedown. Great escape. That's a wash for me. And I know a lot of people all know the takedown. You get points in the and the escape. You don't. I'm like, all right. I mean, I I guess I'm like I said, I'm not I'm not an expert in the criteria. I'm a fan. I don't need to be. But for me personally, that's how I look at it. If I'm just like someone like observing the fight, it's like, wow, that was an incredible escape. This is a, this is a test of skills, right? I mean, ultimately, yeah, you're trying to do damage to the guy. You're ultimately doing a boxcar, you know, destruction derby. But so if the guy gets a takedown and it didn't do any damage with great technique and then another guy exerts amazing technique to stand back up, that seems like a wash. There's no damage done. That's just technique versus technique. That seems like a wash to me. And if that's the case, then who won? You know, you got Robert Whitaker landing, you know, some jabs and you got, you know, Izzy landing some really vicious leg kicks and body kicks. I mean, it's a tough call. It's a tough call. And ultimately, I think you need to give it to the champion. Now, again, I was in person. That is not a good thing when it comes to scoring fights. Okay, that's not a good thing when it comes to scoring fights. Like, I mean, I was watching Dana. I was very close to Dana. Like Dana was 
I mean, I, if I had a, a with, I mean, absolutely without a doubt, from my seat, without standing up, I could have and hit Dana with a quarter. Like, absolutely no problem. I, I wouldn't even have to throw it hard. He was, he was right there. He's huge, dude. But, uh, but I watched him, and he is, he is like, like I was front row of the first set of stands. You know, like I'm front row there. Dana, his table touches the octagon, and he's sitting there, and he watches the TV. He doesn't look in the octagon at all. He watches the TV the entire time. He never looks up. He just watches the TV always because you could see more on the TV. Um, so anyway, I just mean you guys probably had a better vantage than me. So here's the thing, you know, like, so I'm just going to skip the rest of that and I'm going to go and here's, here's where I wanted to pick up. So here's Bisping. I'm not some arrogant asshole that just, that just thinks that I'm the only, that, that I'm the be all end all in my opinion is the only opinion that matters. Therefore, I disregard everything. But I am confident in what I say as well. I know the sport inside and out. I've dedicated my life to martial arts. I am so fully entrenched in the world of UFC. It's my life. That's all I do for 20 years. I was a professional fighter or a fighter, and now I commentate. When I'm not commentating, I do weigh-in shows, post-fights, all the rest of it. You name it. You own... Oh, my, I have my own YouTube channel, a podcast surrounding MMA. I know the sport. So I'm very confident in my opinion. How about that? Okay. How about you take that and suck that down your throat, dude? Open your mouth, open your throat, and see if you can get that entire comment all the way down your throat, okay? Because ultimately, he just threw his credibility up against yours. What are you going to say, dude? He's like, I was one foot from the octagon. You were 1,500 miles from Houston. Here's, here's my resume. Let's talk about yours. What are you, what'd you say you do? Oh, oh, nice, nice. You sell cleaning equipment. Cool. And you've trained in MMA how much? Oh, zero. Nice. Nice. And, and you know the judging criteria how well? Oh, not, not at all. Interesting, dude. Well, here, tell me more about how, how I got it wrong. Go ahead. But remember, just read my resume real quick. Go ahead. Hall of Fame. All I do is commentate. Yeah. Cleaning supplies or whatever you said you did, which is irrelevant. Go ahead. Tell me about it because you know better than me. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So then, you know, then Bisbing was talking about uh, Biz, or Rogan's absence, uh, which, by the way, can I tell you guys something hilarious? If I remember, I'll put this, I'll probably forget this part. But like, so CNN yesterday, CNN ran an article that said that ignoring, uh, I'm sorry, actually, the, the headline initially before they changed it said that uh, Rogan's use of the N word was very similar to January 6th. They said that, dude. That was the headline. And then they got so much flack that they changed it. The article's still the same. So it's still it's something like uh, ignoring Joe Rogan's use of the N-bomb is dangerous. Go look that article up and then try not to spit your drink out laughing. It's so ludicrous. Oh, really? So Joe Rogan reading la rap lyrics is now equivalent to January 6th? I mean, I thought January 6th was equivalent to Pearl Harbor because I heard you guys say that also. So, so let me just admit, and 9-11. So just let me just make sure I make these connections that you journalists have made now, okay? Joe Rogan using, you know what? This is actually good enough. I am going to make another video about this. So look for that. Um, anyway, bottom line, Bisping said that, you know, he was replacing Joe Rogan. He says Joe Rogan is the godfather of MMA commentating, which is correct. He is the original guy to do it. He's the man, dude. Bisping gave Rogan all the respect in the world. And I want to tell Rogan, or I want to say to Bisping, congratulations on your first pay-per-view. I don't need to watch it because I've seen you commentate enough. I know you do an excellent job. And I don't care what these people say about you being biased or not biased, whatever. You're more credible than they are. And I've seen what it's like watching Izzy in person now. And that is something different, son. It's something different. I highly encourage everyone to do it. Just start a YouTube channel to where you can make some side money and you can, uh, you know, use that. Like, just basically think about it as free money. And also you can, you know, it's a tax write-off to go to UFC events and all of a sudden... You'll be in the front row too. So, and I'm not being flippant about that. I'm being serious. And thank you guys again very much for the support on the channel. I went to the last two events and had floor seats, front row seats. And that is directly because of this and your guys' support. And I love you guys for that. I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to go to Mosfidal and Colby. But I spent a lot of money on these last two events, including hotels, flights. Well, flights, the other one. And I don't know. It feels a little bit irresponsible, but I love doing it, dude. I love the sport more than anything, man. I, I, I love it. I love it.